ለመማር ወደ ትምህርት ተቋም መሄድ ግድ አይደለም ናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ ራሳችሁን ከኮሮና ቫይረስ ወረርሽኝ የጠበቃችሁ በቤታችሁ ወይም በተመቻችሁ ቦታ በኢንተርኔት አማካኝነት በኦንላይን ትምህርታችሁ መከታተል ትችላላችሁ ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ ኢኒሲቲዩት ኦፍ ኮመርሻል ማኔጅመንት አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር የሚሰጡ ትምህርቶችን ተከታተላችሁ በስድስት ወር ጊዜ በአለም አቀፍ ደረጃ ተቀባይነት ያለውን የስልጣና ማስረጃ ባለቤት መሆን ይቻላል ልምድ ባላችሁ መምራን እየተማራ ጥያቄና መልስ የክፍል ስራዎች ፈተና መፈተን ክፍል ውስጥ እንዳላችሁት አይነት በኦንላይን ባላችሁበት ቦታ ከናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እህት ኩባንያ ሄሎ ጉድ አፍተርኑን ስቱዴንትስ uh in our last session we have uh, in the final lessons of chapter 4 today uh, we begin new chapter chapter 5 which is all about logical reasoning and fall fallacy this chapter is directly related with the uh, chapter 2 we have seen many things in chapter 2 under chapter 2 we have seen uh, basic concepts of argument evaluation of argument and as a related issues related with logic in general and in chapter 4 uh, we have seen the principles of good argument and the principles of uh, critical thinking under uh, that we have seen that in order to say an argument is uh, good it must be fulfill certain criteria or certain principles of good argument for example there must be principle of structural principle it non violation of contradiction the pre rebuttal principle the principles of relevancy we have seen the principles of sufficiency which are all requirements of uh, good argument in order to say there is good argument this principles must be fulfilled as uh, a criteria of good argument and we have said in the chapter 2 a good argument or a well supported argument is an argument in which when the premise of the argument provides an evidence they are laid evidence to the conclusion which might be necessarily which might be probable depending on the types or the categories of the argument see so concepts are a preliminary requisite to understand this chapter the chapter logical reasoning and fallacies because it will make our understanding very simple if we understand or if you remember those uh, preliminary concepts fallacy is all about false reasoning we have said logic 
if the process of reasoning or is it the theory of right reasoning whereas fallacy is the theory of false reasoning applying false reason there might be many reasons or intention why arguers try to use or commit a kind of fallacious arguments there might be many reasons the reasons vary from a single argument to another so we can understand fallacy uh, it is a defect or it's a pretension of the arguments in general because when we truly truly go to the argument and screening out the detail in fallacy there are many defects or false reasons because of this some people say that fallacy is like a human being because human beings are pretenders they pretend they divert truth they try to provide a kind of false reason though it might not be uh, easy to look at where the false premise or where the fallacy is committed depending on the nature of the uh, or the types of the fallacy which is committed so the people say that fallacies are pretenders they are defectors they try to pretend as if they are a true claims or a true evidences but when we look at when we inspect in detail the fallacious reason the fallacious nature of the argument can be uh, uh, overlooked so fallacy in general can be understood as a deficit a deficiency or logical problems logical problem problem that occurs in argument for various reason so fallacy is uh, often committed because of the problem in the reasoning process or the form of the argument or the defect in the content of the statement using are they precise or a conclusion uh, i think you remember in chapter 3 we have seen defects of language vague the vagueness and ambiguous ambiguity and vagueness they are defects in language if the arguers use such defects of language and they may intentionally use those defects those ambiguous languages to let others accept their argument as if it is true so defect improper use of language can be one reason for committing a fallacy the other is that it might be because of the reasoning process the illogical nature of even though the arguer has a kind of true premises if he uses a logical reasoning still that arguer commits a fallacy i 
I think you remember the videos that you have seen in our uh, last session about the principles of good argument, the truth principle and the logical principles. The, those, these two are the necessary conditions in order to take this good argument, no matter they are not uh, sufficient. So logical reasoning, improper logical reasoning may be serve as though fallacies can be committed by many various reasons. We will look at those reasons while we are looking the typologies of fallacies. The different typologies of fallacies will tell us those reasons why fallacy is committed. So, uh, fallacy can be committed both in deductive and inductive argument. Uh, let's look at specifically the meaning of fallacy. We have seen an overview of uh, fallacy, but now let us look at specifically what fallacy is. Fallacy is a general term that refers to logical defect or flaw or fault that certain argument exhibit in it is a structural re arrangement or reasoning process or in the content of a statement used as a premise or a conclusion for various reasons other than the mere false premises. So in general, we can say that fallacy is a violation of standard argumentative rules or criteria. As I have told you, there are standard criteria or principles of good arguments. The violation of those principles, the violation of structural principle, the violation of reputable principle, the violation of uh, relevancy, and other principles of good argument tell us fallacy has been committed. So we can understand fallacy as the violation of those principles of good argument. For example, we have seen within an argument there should not be contradiction between the premises and the conclusion. Because if there is contradiction, it violates the principles of structural principle. So it does not fulfill the, the uh, principles of good argument. So if those principles has been violated, we can say that fallacy has been committed. It can be the violation of one principle that we have seen. It might be the violation of many others. These are the whole can be understood as uh, the fallacy. So uh, an argument is good as far as it meets all those set criteria of good argument. If, the, if they are fulfilled, fallacy has not been committed. If there is principle of, of structural, if there is principle of limital, if there is relevancy, we cannot say that fallacy has been committed. Fallacy is committed when the, these uh, principles are violated. So fallacy can be committed in many ways, but usually it involves either mistaken reasoning, reasoning process or the creation of some illusion that makes bad argument appear to be good. You know, what are good you use in order to persuade the listener is that what he did is that no matter he brings a kind of bad argument, he tried to use 
it might be psychological persuasion, it might be using of value claim words to seems it appears as it is good argument, but that is illusion. When we go through and look in detail, fallacy has been uh, committed. In most time, what arguers use to persuade the listener is that instigating or provoking the listener uh, mind. They instigate, they provoke. They create a kind of feeling or emotion on the mental of the listener. Then they can uh, then commit their uh, fallacy. But the listener may accept that fallacy as if it is a true or a well-supported argument. But we can't say that, as I have told you, fallacy can be committed in both types of argument. We have seen the unsound or the uncogent argument is an evaluation of argument. If it is if the if it is not contains a true premises, and if it is not logically support the conclusion, it's unsound. In the case of deductive and uncogent in the case of inductive. So uncogency and unsoundness are the evaluation of the argument shows up as there is there is fallas or fallacy has been committed. Now let's look at we have seen what fallacy is. Fallacy is a pretension, it is a defect, it's a flow, slow reasoning, false reasoning. By simply instigating our emotion and our psychological So that they, uh, they commit fallacy. The types of fallacy. Fallacy can be in general, be either formal fallacy and informal fallacy. Those fallacies which are committed in a formal way, the listener can easily identify through a mere inspection of the form or the structure of the argument so that he can identify the fallacy because it has been committed formally. But in the case of informal fallacy, the listener cannot easily identify where the fallacy is committed through mere inspection of the structure or the forms of the argument. What he must do in order to identify where the fallacy is committed, he must look the argument in detail. Looking out of the wording of the argument, looking at the reasoning process will enable the listener to, is, to identify where the fallacy is committed. So the difference between the formal fallacy and the informal fallacy is that in the case of formal fallacy, the listener can easily identify where the fallacy is committed through mere inspection of the forms or the structures of the argument. Whereas in the case of informal fallacy, he cannot identify by mere inspection. Rather, he must look at the argument in detail. The wording, the grammar, the content of the argument, the reasoning process, he must look at so that he can understand whether 
a phallus is committed or not. So the typology so far, phalluses can be uh, formal or informal. This phallus can be committed in both deductive and inductive argument. The difference is that in the case of formal fallacy, it's committed in the case of for deductive argument, whereas in the case of informal fallacy, it can be committed both in deductive and in inductive argument. The informal fallacies have the ability to hide, you know, because they, they try to defeat the argument. They try to pretend so that the listener cannot easily look at mere inspection. Means in the case of informal fallacy, the arguer tries to hide the genuinity or the truthfulness of the argument. It hides its genuinity. So informal files cannot be identified through mere inspection. It's only through detailed analysis of the content of the argument that tell us or reveal us where the problem or the trouble has been committed. Let us look at this example. This example of formal phallus. It says all tigers are mammals. It says all tigers are mammals. This is the first premises. Okay, let's look at these examples of formal fallacy. The first premise is say, says all tigers are mammals. This is the first premise. The second premise is all mammals are animals. From these two premises, an arguer concludes all tigers are mammals. When we change this argument in this form, A represents a tiger, B represents an animal, C represents mammal, so that all A refers to all tigers are B, all mammals. By mere inspection, by simple observation, you can easily identify where the fallacy is committed. You see? In order to conclude or infer all tigers are mammals, first, in the second premises, it, it must be changed in a way that all animals must be mammals. All animals, not all C. All B are C. It must be changed. All B. All instead of C, B and bring C here and accordingly change this place and here bring this one. Because if we, if we make in that way, there is principle of transferability. Okay, so uh, you can easily identify where the palace is committed. The palace is committed in the second premises. So, through mere inspection of this form, you can see that the argument is invalid. In the second example, hypothetical synology, we have seen the instance of deductive argument. Argument is based on definition, argument is based on mathematics, argument is based on synologism. They are typically examples of deductive argument. And we have said formal fallacies are committed in deductive argument. So here is the second example of how formal fallacy can be committed. Look here. The first, it says, if apes are intelligent, then apes can solve puzzles. If 
this argument has only this claim it will not serve as, as an argument but we have an additional premises and we have conclusion Ebbs console the teasels and from these two premises Ebbs are intelligent here also we can uh, we can identify by mere inspection where the palace is committed because if Ebbs are intelligent then Ebbs can solve them if this is the first premises and if Ebbs can solve the puzzle, therefore Ebbs are intelligent in order to solve the problem Ebbs must first be unintelligent it should not become here as a conclusion it must be appear here as a premises we must have that evidence or support without having any evidence that epis are unintelligent how we can say that epis can solve the fusel as a premises totally it should not be at all so it's one form of formal uh, fallacy of course in our uh, discussion in our next discussion we will not look at the formal fallacies because formal fallacies can be uh, identified through mere inspection our discussion in this chapter in general is all about not about formal fallacies, rather about informal fallacies. So let's see what informal fallacies are and their examples. Informal fallacies are those mistakes, reasoning process of an argument that cannot be recognized through analyzing the structure of argument, but only through. So analysis of the content of the argument. Only the meaning of the word, how the statements are constructed and how the inference are made that reveals the false reasoning. We have said this one. Let us look at examples of informal fallacies. Look at this example. It says all factories are plants. This is the first premises. And the first premise says all plants are things that contain chlorophyll. And the conclusion of this argument based on the first premises is all factories are things that contain chlorophyll. When we change this uh, wording into this form we can say that all a means all factories factories are plants b represent plants all b are c you see all factory contains a chlorophyll as c all a are c here by mere inspection it seems it's a valid argument because there is principle of transferability. B transfer here, you see? If A, all A are B and E, B, R, C, we can say that all A, R, C is valid. The form is valid. But what is the problem, what is the fallacy committed here in this example is that when we go through detailed inspection of the argument, here is the word plant. This is the first. Here is also, in the second premise, here is also plant. Here is the second plant. So these are two different words and with two different meanings. In the first premises here, all factories are plants refers to is refers to the building where the manufacturing is 
being made. You see, all factories, the equipment within the factories. But here, plant refers to the living organism, the, the life body, the flora, the flora, the life body, that is the flora. So the meanings of plant here and here are quite different. So we cannot understand these two are as if they are similar. So the problem committed in this fallacy is that the wording, the wording, that is the plant. Because of this, this uh, argument commits informal fallacy. Use of language, defect. You see the difference? How can we identify? It seems valid, of course. The arrangement is valid. But the wording, the language is problematic. Because of this, without that fallacy, informal fallacy is committed. So as you can see, uh, the above, can be changed into all A, R, B, all C, R, D, and all R, A, R, D. Because this is the first plant, and this is the second plant. Let me show you this one. Two plants. So uh, in general, we have uh, more than 30 informal fallacies. There are more than 30 fallacies. But in our discussion in this course, we will look at the 22 informal fallacies, which are very difficult to identify by mere inspection. Only we can identify those fall fallacies through detailed inspection through looking at the content of the argument, the logical reasoning process. And we can categorize or classify these 22 informal fallacy categories into five subcategories. The first subcategory is fallacy of relevance. We'll look at and we'll cover this in our today's session. The second category is the fallacy of weak induction. The third one is the fallacy of presumption. The fourth one is the fallacy of ambiguity. And the uh, fallacy of analogy. These are the basic subcategories of informal fallacies. Now let's look at the fallacy of free levels. Fallacy of relevance refers to it is an informal fallacy that is committed because of the irrelevance of the premise to the conclusion. Here, the problem is the irrelevance of the premise to the, to the conclusion. I mean. This is what makes all subcategories of fallacy of relevance common, they all commit this error, irrelevant of the premise to the conclusion, except missing the point. In the case of missing the point, the fallacy where it committed is, the conclusion is relevant to the premises, the vice versa. It is not the premise, rather, it is the conclusion which is irrelevant to the premise in the case of missing the point. Fallacy of relevance. So the premises are logically. The reasoning process of the argument in the case of fallacy of relevance 
is logically irrelevant. The premise is logically, logically. The reasoning process is relevant to say or to conclude this is the conclusion or to make inference. So even though the premises are irrelevant logically to the conclusion, what the arguer did is that they tried to use, they tried to provoke, they tried to instigate our psychology to be the premises are relevant. So in the fallacy of relevancy, the arguer use psychological persuasion. They use emotional appealing. They appeal the listener to accept their argument. But when we look at in detail, as I told you, it does not follow a logical reasoning process. What they only, what the arguer only used is that use psychological persuasion or use a kind of words which can, which can arouse the feelings of the listener. It is through this way that the arguer commits the fallacy of three levels. So in order to uh, distinguish the fallacy, we must look at the emotional appeals. It is, it is that in such situation that we can able to understand the genuinity of the evidences. This is what makes all subcategories of relevance of fantasy common. They use appeal. They, I mean emotional appeal. They use, they use psychology. They use instigation, using of value added words to persuade the listener. So we must, we must look at the genuinity of the evidence. Here are the subcategories of fallacy of relevance. The first one is appeal to force. The second one is appeal to pity. The third one is appeal to people. The fourth one is argument against the person. The fifth one is accident. The sixth one is trauma. The fifth one is missing the point. Uh, the seventh one is missing the point, and the eighth one is red herring. Let us look at these subcategories of relevance, fallacy of relevance in detail. Fallacy of appeal to force. It is, it is one subcategories of fallacy of relevance, which is committed because of the irrelevant of the premise to the log to the conclusion. Logically, it can be uh, named as argumentum ad baculum. In Latin, it can be it's equivalent term. Appeal to force refers to in Latin as argumentum ad baculum, or it can be also named as appeal to stick. It's not appeal to carrots, it's appeal to stick, stick approach. As you can understand the name itself, what the arguers in the case of this uh, fallacy of relevance, that's appeal to force, is that he tried to use force 
He tried to coerce listeners to accept the argument because it creates a kind of psychological relevancy on the minds of the lead. The listener treat will be happened if he will, if he is not accepting that argument. So if it occurs when an arguer posts a conclusion to another person tells that the person either implicitly or explicitly that some harm, some, some uh, damage will come to him if he does not accept the conclusion. So the acceptance of the conclusion is not because of the logical relevance of the premises. Rather, it is the treat or the queries that the arguer uses or tells or creates a kind of fear on the minds of the listener. So the listener accepts that argument not because of the logical relevance of uh, the premise, rather he fears that some uh, consequence, bad consequence will, will be happen if he did not accept that uh, argument. Or in other it occurs when the conclusion defended by a threat. The well-being of those who do not accept. He says, if you do, if you do not accept, the Agur says, if you do not accept this, some negative consequence will happen on you, on your family, on your kids, you may say like this, to create threat, question. So it, this fallacy allows involves a treat by arguer to physical or psychological. So the treat can be both physical and psychological. But this treat is logically irrelevant. Uh, as I have told you. Let, let's look at the example to better understand appeal to force fallacy. Look at this example. Mr. Kabada, it says, Mr. Kabada, you accused me of fraud and embezzlement. You have to drop the charge you feel against me. You have to remember that I am your ex boss. I will torture both you and your family members if you do not drop your case. Go. Got it? You got it, or is this the general intention of this this uh, argument? Is that Mr. Kabir, you have to drop your charge, otherwise you will face an accident on you or on your family. You create fear for not to be charged because of what he has done, corruption. So here, what the arguer, what the boss, what the boss try to use to accept his argument by the listener is that the use of question, question, treating Kabada. He treat Kabada to accept his argument. በተመረ ከፈ ብሎ መብረር ይቻላል ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ ህድ ኩባንያ ከከፍተኛ ትምርት አግባብነት እና ጥራት ኤጀንሲ ሙሉ ቀናን ባገኘንባቸው በማስተርስ ዲግሪ MBA በስትራቴጂክ ማኔጅመንት MBA በባንኪንግ እና ፋይናንስ MBA በቢዝነስ ሊደርሺፕ MBA በሪስክ እና ኢንሹራንስ MSc በኢንተርናሽናል ትሬድ እና ኢኮኖሚክስ ዘርፎች በእውቀት ለመቅረጽ ይበቁ ፕሮፌሰሮቻችን አረንጓዴ መብራታቸውን አብርተዋል በነገራችን ላይ በኬንያ ሀገር ከሚገኙ ስመጥር ዩኒቨርሲቲዎች በሚመጡ ፕሮፌሰሮች የትኩረት መስክ ትምርቶቹ መሰጣታቸው ልዩ ያደርገናል 
በመርጥ የትምርት ስርዓት የተገነባው ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ በመጀመሪያ ዲግሪ በአቪዬሽን ማኔጅመንት በሆቴል ማኔጅመንት በአካውንቲንግ እና ፋይናንስ በማርኬቲንግ ማኔጅመንት አስተማማኝ ትምርት ይገብዩና ራስዎንና ሀገሩን ይለውጡ አድራሻ 22 አደባባይ ወደ ሾላ በሚወስዶ መንገድ ላይ ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ ስህት ኩባንያ ህልሞን አሁን ያደርጋል I think you better understand what appeal to force is. The second is appeal to pity. It can be named as argumentum ad misericordiam in Latin is equivalent. Appeal to pity uh, is an attempt to support the conclusion merely by invoking pity in one's audience when the statements that invoke the pity are logically unrelated to the conclusion. And the appeal to pity is not generally speaking very subtle, but but if the arguer succeed in invoking sufficiently strong feeling of pity, he or she may uh, distract the audience from the logic of the situation and create a desire to accept the conclusion. Here, what the arguer do is that it is a kind of begging, you know, begging. It is uh, letting the, uh, the person to understand the problem of others on behalf it's begging the kinds of begging it's a pity for better understand uh, let's look at this example for example the headship position in the department of account should be given to mr omar abdullah omar has six hunger children to feed and his wife desperately needs an operation to save her eyesight. You see, what the arguer try to persuade the listener is that Mr. Omar Abdullah has many kids. Has, this is the first evidence. Six children to feed. And he also added, his wife needs an operation to save her eyes. So let's give, let us give for Omar Abdullah the position of the Department of Accounting. You see, this is collaboration, a kind of collaboration. Positivist thinking, it seems a positive, but the uh, evidences here are not relevant to accept the conclusion that Mr. Omar Abdullah should be given the position of the accounting department. They are not logically relevant to accept the conclusion. But they try to create a kind of collaboration, collaboration, favor for Mr. Abdullah. So the listener or those who are in a position to make decision may accept or at the same time may not, they may reject. But what we can be sure of here is that the evidences, they are not logically relevant to say the head position must be given for uh, Omar Abdullah. This, in most cases, this kind of fallacy is committed uh, in the case of a relationship between a teacher and a student. For example, what a student is use a kind of appeal is that for the teacher, Mr. X or dear my teacher, I will be uh, fail if you didn't add me this amount of mark for this course. I will be failed. So please help me. They may say like this one. But this reasons, reasons by the student is not logically relevant 
to give for the student additional five marks. But if the teacher wanted to collaborate or help the student, he may add, but it's not more, it's not ethically good. It's not ethically good. But here, what the student tried to tell for the teacher is a, a pity, a pity. A kind of begging. The third types of uh, fallacy of freelance is appeal to people. It is very, it's natural. It's not natural that we human beings want to be loved, esteemed, admired, valued, recognized, and accepted by others. It is our natural behavior. You all the students, I too, we deserve this, or we want this to be loved by our friends, our families, our colleagues. We have this desire to be loved, to be respected by others, and to appreciate it and give a high value for us, to be recognized. This is our national desire and interest as human beings. It's, it's normal and it's, it's normal. It is the very nature of we all human beings. Uh, we also we may feel being part of the community, belongingness, belonging to the community with others. Because it's our very important uh, human needs. So appeal to people strikes his desires. What are theory use here is that he refers these desires and to be get accept acceptance for the conclusion. So appeal to people is an attempt to persuade a person or a group by appealing to through those desires and those needs. So that because of that we need to be loved to, to be respected, to be recognized, we may accept the arguer intention or argument, though those intentions and evidences are not logically relevant to the conclusion. Let us look at this example for better understanding of appeal to person. Mr. Rila, are you saying that President Bush made a moral error when he decided to go to war with Iraq? I cannot believe my ears, you see? That is not how American feels. Not true. American, true Americans, anyone. You are an American? Are you an, an American? Aren't you, Mr. Lee? Was this person, what is that you were trying to use this, that Mr. Reilly, if he does not accept that the President Bush declaration of the conquest or the war against Iraq was wrong, and they are your added that the remaining true Americans do not accept or do not feel that the invasion of Iraq is morally wrong, which is the decision of President Bush. So this person will uh, accept this argument because he, he has the desire or the feeling to, to be treated like others, others true Americans. So not to deviate from other true Americans, this person, Mr. Riley, may have, may accept the argument in order to become uh, accepted by others. 
this is uh, how the fallacy is uh, committed. So in people, uh, appeal to people, there are two uh, forms or approaches how the appeal to people is committed. It can be direct, it can be indirect. The direct, direct approach of appeal to people fallacy occurs when an arguer addressing a large group of people, it's not individuals, he addresses a large group of people, excites the emotion, estrogenism of the crowd to win acceptance for his or conclusion. So here is objective is to arouse a kind of mode mentality. This is a strategy used by nearly every propagandist and uh, demagogues or orators. It is very uh, familiar what the uh, orators and the propagandists used to arouse the minds more mentalities of their following that you a kind of direct appeal to person. Creating their charisma, their behavioral influence, or creating a kind of more mentality on the listeners by uh, orators and propagandists. In the case of indirect arguments, what that your aims is not the uh, groups of people or a large portion of the society, rather one or more individuals separately, focusing some aspects of their relation to the crowds. So depending on uh, this understanding, we can look at the forms of indirect approach of appeal to people for us. The first one is the bandwagon, the second one is the vanity, and the third one is the snowball. Let us look at this one by one. Bandwagon fallacy. This is a kind of fallacy that commonly appeal to the desire of an individual to be considered as part of the group or community in which they are living, associating the individual with the group or with the community. One of the characteristics of the community or the group is that they share some common norms and values. Not only share, but also every individual are expected to manifest group conformity. We have seen what conformity is in the case of various of critical thinking. Conformity in the case of group thinking. So bandwagon fallacy just uses this emotion and feeling to get an acceptance for a certain conclusion. For easy or better understanding, let's look at this example. The majority of the people of Ethiopia accept the opinion that child circumcision is the right thing to do. Therefore, you also should accept that child circumcision is the right thing to do. You see how we can understand how he tried to make his argument acceptable sanctioning the opinions of the majority of the individual. If he, according to this argument, if he is not accepting that child circumcision is the right thing, this individual will be outcasted. He's not treated among those So in order to be accepted by the other majority, what this person, what the listener has to do is that accepting as the child circumcision, child circumcision is a right thing. 
if you do not accept, you will be outcasted. You will be rejected. You will be stigmatized from the society, from that section of or members of the society. So if a person considers that your child circumcision is the right thing to do because the majority of people accept it, then the argument comes a fallacy of bandwagon. The fact may not be child circumcision is right. It may be wrong, it's wrong. But why, why? the reason that that person accept as if it is right thing is that it might be because of fear of not to be outcasted or not to be stigmatized. So this kind of forms of indirect uh, fallacy that bandwagon is committed in this, uh, in this way. The second one is appeal to vanity. Vanity is often associated with the products that someone is admired, persuaded, or imitated. The idea being that you too will be admired and persuaded if you use it. It is better to hear again example for better understand these forms. For better understanding, examples are better. So let us look at this example. For example, in Ethiopia, broadcast corporates, the Ethiopian broadcast corporate may show the famous footballer Saladin Said wearing Adidas shoe and says, where is this new fashion shoe? A shoe which is worn only by few respected celebrities like Saladin, Adidas shoe. It's a kind of advertisement. It's a promotion. So what the listener will do in order to respect like a celebrity that is Saladin is wearing an Adidas shoe. What so the listener did is that he would buy Adidas and he would wear it. It's a kind of promotion. What the article you uh, tried to do here is that associating the product that is the shoe with the issue of being admired. Be wondered like those, those celebrities. But here, wearing Adidas shoe, like famous footballer, is, is may not be a legitimate support to say that wearing Adidas is best. But what are your uses if appeal to vanity? Then many uh, producers, when this person will buy this product without go further, without the need of scrutinizing out this uh, advertisement, they simply accept it to be considered as a celebrity. The third form uh, forms of this indirect appeal to people is snowberry. Appeal to snowberry, Faras. Appeal to snowberry, Faras is based on this desire to be regarded as superior to others. You know, in the case of appeal to vanity, it is associating a person with the product. Here, it's associating with others to regard as superior than others do. So the fallacy, uh, this fallacy, individuals 
and their desire to regard us different and better than the other average. Look at this example. The newly produced Gavata Gooder wine is not for everyone to drink, but you are different from other people, aren't you? Therefore, the newly produced Gavata wine, Gooder wine, is for you. It's also a kind of an advertisement, but it tries to associate you to be regarded as superior to than others, comparing individuals and an individuals with others, with others. I think this is very understandable. The fourth type of fallacy of relevance is that argument against the, the person. In this case, there are uh, always two arguers, always. One of them advance either directly or indirectly a certain argument, and the other one respond by directing his orientation not to the first person argument, but the first person himself. This is a very key expression. The first person himself, not the argument of the first person. Simply attacking of the person, not the arguments of the person here. That is why the name of the, this fallacy is against the person. Against the person, not against the argument. So when this occurs, the second person takes to commit an argument against the person. This argument against the person occurs in three forms, it can be in three forms. The first one is ad homin abusive. The, se the second one is the abdomen circumstantial. And the third one is the 2K or U2. Let's look at this one by one. The ad homin abusive fallacy of argument against the person. In this fallacy, while the second person responded, the first person argument by verbal abusing the first person. You see? The abusion or the abusive nature of the second person to toward the first person might be through referring the misconducts of the first person in other circumstances and in other occasions. He may say this person has a bad prior background. He still, he abuse, he made corruption, he raves like that. By listing this bad attribute of that person, he simply rejects the arguments of that person, simply not that uh, existing argument, simply referring his prior bad behaviors and characteristics of the, that person. That is the first argument. Look at the example to understand. Person A. A is a person of bad character. Conclusion, and argument should not be accepted. You see? I may be a person of bad character. You may be a person of bad character. Based on this, can we say that my argument should not be accepted? Totally, it should not be. It's logically relevant. This conclusion is logically relevant. The premise is logically relevant. The bad characteristics of a person should not be a guarantee for not to accept the argument of that person. That is ad homin abusifalas. This is simply uh, an explicit, it's an expressed and direct personal attack. Simply, I hate him, so his argument, I, I will not accept or I should not accept the argument of that person. He's saying like this one, saying like this one. 
is a direct personal attack, not attacking of the idea of the first person. The second uh, form of argument against a person is the anomaly circumstantial. You see, there is a circumstantial fallacy. The first one is, is a, an abusive to the characteristics of the first arguer. Here is the circumstantial. The Adomi circumstance becomes the same way as Adomi abusive, but instead of having verbal abuse on, on the opponents, that what the respondent attempts to discredit the opponent's argument by indicating certain circumstances. It's referring circumstances. You see? Nearly, they are, it's nearly similar. The difference is that here, what the respondent attempt to discredit it by referring the circumstances that affect the opponents. The other means circumstantial is easy to recognize because it always takes these words. Like, of course, Mr. X argues this way. Just look at the circumstances that affect him. You see? Mr. X is argued in a certain way, in a, cer in a certain circumstance, because that circumstance will affect him either positively or negatively, based on the intention of the arguer. I may say negatively. It will negatively. The reason that Mr. X argues in that way is that it may, if he did not argue that way, it may affect him negatively. I may say like this one. For example, look at this example. Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia, King Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia, argued in the League of Nations that the member states should give their hands to Ethiopia to expel the fascist Italia from our country. But the member states should not listen to the king. This is you see how the second argument tried to uh, commit the fallacy, but the member states should not listen to the king. I said, Lassie, the first argue in this way because he wanted to resume his power once the Italian expelled from the Ethiopian. Unfortunately, the intention of the king, I said, may be true, that is, expelling the members of the League of Nations must in favor of Ethiopia to exile Ethiopia. This may be the intention of the Haida Sindasi. You see, but what the, how, but what the second arguer understand the intention of Haida Sindasi is that in a, certain, in a certain circumstance. That is, the reason Haile Selassie is, is trying, trying to present his condolence to expel the fascist Italian from the country is to make his future crown secured. But this might not be the fact, may not be the fact. So understanding in a certain circumstance, this is circumstantial. That is the uh, understanding of the arguer. It may not be the intention of the king. I just said, that's the first of Ethiopia. This is how the fallacy is committed. Circumstantial. The third one is you to fallacy. It's very easy. It begins the same way uh, as the other two varieties of the ad homie argument, except that the second arguer attempts to make the first appeal to be hypocritical or arguing in a bad case. The second arguer usually accomplishes by citing features in the life of the behavior of the first actor that conflict with the latter conclusion. 
for better understanding, let's see example. A patient to a doctor. Look, doctor, you cannot advise me to stop smoking cigarettes because you yourself is a smoker. You too. That is why the name is given. You see? You too. You too. Uh, you too yourself is a smoking. How do you advise me to quit a smoking while you yourself is smoking? I think you understand. A doctor may advise a patient don't smoke cigarettes. He has the discretionary power to, ad to advise a patient for not to smoke a cigarette. But the doctor may smoke himself. But what the patient did is that here, You smoke, so do not advise me not to smoke. So in order to advise me, first you must stop smoking. But it's logically relevant for not to smoke. A person who is not smoking may advise us do not smoke. That is a doctor. This is a YouTube, YouTube or PK. Fallacy. The fifth one is accident. This fallacy is committed when the general general is applied to a specific case, and which is uh, not intended to cover. Typically, uh, the general is cited directly or indirectly in the premise and wrongly applied specific case mentioned in the conclusion. You see, the general rule is cited in the premises as an evidence. But what they are your concluding in the general rule. Look this. Freedom of speech is constitutionally granted rights. Therefore, John Radical should not be arrested for his speech that cited in the riot last week. In this example, the, the, the general rule is that freedom of speech is normally granted. It's constitutionally granted. But the specific case, that is the speech made by John Radical, because the speech is incited a riot. So the constitution that the general rule does not cover this specific rule. So the general is not applied to this specific, the matter of interpretation of the general. The sixth one is the straw man. The straw man fallacy is committed when an arguer dis distorts an opponent's argument for the purpose of more easily attacking it. The more is that distorts argument and then conclude that the opponent's real argument has been demolished. So by doing so, they are guilty to have set up a straw man and that is knocked it down only to conclude that the real man, opposing argument has been knocked down as well. Look this example for these features for more understanding first. These are the major features of Stroman Palace. The first feature is that there are two individuals or group discussing about some controversial issue. And these two groups or individuals have two opposite views, very opposite views. The second feature is that the critics, however, does not rationally criticize the main or the substantive argument of the opponent. It's not the substance that we criticize, rather, Besides the idea of which are misrepresentation of the main content of the argument. He does so far is attacking the argument. The third is that the critics conclude 
by criticizing the misrepresented idea that knocked down the main idea. Look at this example. Mr. Balai believed that ethnic federalism has just destroyed the country and therefore it should be replaced by geographical federalism. But we should not accept this proposal. He just wanted to take the country back to the previous region. Geographical federalism was the kind of state structure during the monarchical region. We do not want to go back to the past. Thus, we should reject Mr. Belay's proposal. Substantially, the person who is against the view of Mr. Balai, there is no difference in the subs on the substantial argument. Only the difference is that this argument try to change what Mr. Balai says. They all, these two individuals accept it. Federalism must be destroyed. But what the second argument try to uh, insight is that this geographical federalism will restore to the previous monarchical region. You see how he, uh, he commit the fallacy. This is the way that the Stroman, uh, the knockdown is committed. The servant, the servants is not missing the point. Or ignorant elenchi. Missing the point, however, is illustrate a special forms of irrelevance. We have said this one is different from other types of fallacies of relevance because it is not the premise which is irrelevant to the conclusion, rather, it is the conclusion which is irrelevant to the premise. It occurs when the premise of an argument are put one particular conclusion, but then different conclusion, often vaguely related to the correct conclusion that is true. The argument is ignorant of the logical implication of, of his or her own premise. As a result, draw that is miss, misses the point entirely. Lack or poor ability to look at things in abstract. You see? Okay, uh, there is no here example. Let me give you one example. For example, we may assume that uh, a Addis in Addis Ababa University, there might be poor student service. As you suppose there is there is a poor student service. And suppose there is poor quality of instructors. And suppose there is low payment, low incentive for teachers, for instructors. So what an arguer have, may have these factors. Depending on these genuine factors, but he may miss the point for conclusion. He may conclude that Addis Ababa University must be closed. He may conclude in this way. Here, the conclusion clothing the Addis Ababa University is logically irrelevant to those premises. The absence of adequate student service, the absence of incentive for instructors, and poor quality or the tenor and the experience of the instructors in, in Addis Ababa University cannot be an evidence for closing the university. Instead, what it can be the remedy is improving the student service, giving training for instructors to boast their uh, experience, and giving incentives. These are the remedies. So the conclusion should be made accordingly. But what the arguer say that Addis Ababa University must be closed. 
which is wrong, which is totally missed the point. Missed the, it ignores those uh, available evidence. The solution cannot be at all closing the university. I think you better understand what missing the point. The problem is not on the premise, rather on the conclusion. Irrelevant of the conclusion. The last one for our discussion uh, for today is that's red herring fallacy of relevance. Uh, sometimes this fallacy of relevance, uh, that's red herring, is known as of the track, of the track fallacy, or uh, this, uh, uh, or diversion, we may say that, diversion, diversion, it can be named uh, in such way. The fallacy is missing the point. It is committed when the argument di diverts the intention of the reader or listener by changing the subject so different, but sometimes self-related uh, it work. The argument then may finish by either drawing a conclusion about this different issue or by merely presuming that some conclusion has been established. By so doing, the narrator prepared to have won the argument. So the red herring fallacy gave its name from the procedure used to train hunting dogs to uh, follow the scent. It's a very fantastic expression. Red herring as it smoked and the tired fish fishes it dragging across the trail with the aims of leading dogs astray. Since red herring have uh, specially potent scent caused in the parts of the smoking, presumed to preserve them. Only the best dog will follow the original scent. To use the red herring fallacy effectively, the reviewer must change the original subject matter of the argument itself the uh, reader or listener not noticing it. Look this example for better understanding of what red hearing fallacy of relevance is. The e editor of Ad Addis Flower newspaper have accused our company of being one of the city's worst water polluters. But Addis Flower newspaper is responsible for much more pollution than we are. After all, they own a paper company in that company discharges ton of the chemical residues, residues into the city river every day. Here, what the arguer tried to use to make his argument acceptable is that Diverting or changing the motion of being the motion being discussed, distorting, outing the track, then another new issue will be raised. Then will the first topic will be forgotten, and other new attention will be given for the newly yeah, fabricated problem. So the intention of the argument is creating a new, new agenda, new motion by diverting the minds of the listeners. As you can understand from this example, the arguer changes his mind from uh, water pollution to that uh, chemical reduced into the city rivers every day by the paper company. You see, he diverts from the first uh, motion. Motion, that is the first motion was that to be accused by uh, the company because of uh, waste water uh, pollution caused by them. But later he changes the discussion, the issue to another issue. 
so that they they track of the first and discuss on the newly agenda by forgetting by of tracking the first one that is how the fallacy of red herring is committed <coughs> But simply, this is all about today. See you in our next session. Thank you very much. Le unit mafter alama chino alama kafto da dari mona lebacho. The National Airways at Kubania National Aviation College. ራትና ደረጃውን የተበቀ ስልጣና በመስጠት ብቁ ዜጋ ያፈራነው በፍላይት ኦፕሬሽን በበረራ አመስተንግዶ በቲኬቲንግ እና ሪዘርቬሽን በሆቴል እና ቱሪዝም ሙያዎች አሰልጥነን ተወዳዳሪና አድርጎታለን ኮሌጃችን ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር ዓለም አቀፉ ቅና ያለው ስልጣና እየሰጠ ይገኛል በፍላይት ኦፕሬሽን በበረራ አመስተንግዶ የምንሰጣቸው ስልጣና ከኢትዮጵያ ሲቪል አቪዬሽን ባለስልጣን ሙሉ ቅና አለው አድራሻ ከጎላጉል ታወር 22 አደባባይ ወደ ሾላ በሚወስደው መንገድ ላይ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እት ኩባንያ ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ ህልሞን እሁን ያደጋል